The story then shares the author's personal journey with seeking intimacy, which began at age four when witnessing his parents' messy divorce. He asked himself, what is wrong here, in trying to understand their lack of intimacy and conflict-averse behavior. As an adult in his own relationships, the author found he had unintentionally adopted his parents' aversion to facing conflict due to never seeing a good model of intimacy. At the first sign of issues, he would ask himself, how is this going to end? Assuming the outcome would be negative like his parents. Through years of studying relationships, the author learned how asking meaningful questions can foster greater intimacy and connection between partners by facilitating exploration, vulnerability, and problem solving. The book aims to share the lessons and powerful questions the author has identified from his research to help readers deepen their own relationships. The focus is on cultivating the right conversations through thoughtful questioning. The passage discusses the concept of intimacy and how to better understand and capture it. It notes intimacy is difficult to define, but involves a heightened sense of human connection. The author realized through filmmaking that capturing intimate conversations on camera allowed deeper access and insight into human bonds. This inspired him to create a documentary project called The And to illuminate the invisible space between people in relationships. The And involves filming tailored question and answer sessions between two participants, displaying their faces side by side on a split screen. This reveals the nonverbal reactions and energetic connection between them, making intimacy more visible and comprehensible for viewers. By focusing on the and, the conjunction between people rather than individuals, and allowing viewers to see both faces simultaneously, the project aims to provide a unique perspective into what intimacy looks and feels like through emotional conversations. This illuminates the invisible forces that bind people together. In summary, the passage discusses the author's realization that capturing intimate exchanges on film can reveal deeper insights into human connection, leading him to create the AND project to make the invisible bonds of intimacy more visible and comprehensible. The writer developed a documentary project called The AND that filmed intimate conversations between couples about their relationships. It featured over 1,200 couples from 11 countries and garnered major awards and viewership. The format showed the couple's faces side by side, revealing subtle exchanges and in intimacy, even when the words seemed flat. It provided an archive of human relationships over time. The writer realized crafting thoughtful questions was key to eliciting deep sharing between partners. A question about one partner's relationship with his mother led to an emotional, vulnerable moment between the couple. They learned to sequence questions to build trust and deepen connection, reliably resulting in intimacy. The writer saw patterns in how society's rules affect intimacy, but also love's impulse to connect. The project gave insights into relationships, like how one's partners uniquely offer growth opportunities, even in dysfunctional cases like the writer's parents. Facing fears together is how intimacy can be accomplished. The and became the writer's life's work, put online to inspire better questioning and deeper connections. It was later adapted into a card game to bring those questions to people's own lives. Here are the key points summarized. The passage discusses how we are constantly asking questions internally, both consciously and unconsciously, but often focus only on the answers and statements that arise, not the questions themselves. Our culture values answers, outcomes, and actions more than the thoughtful crafting of insightful questions that could lead to deeper understanding. We rarely consider the power and impact of how a question is worded and the type of answer it is designed to elicit. By obsessively chasing answers rather than creating better questions, we miss an opportunity. Questions shape the space for potential solutions, yet we overlook their importance. To gain true understanding, we need to stop only looking for answers and instead focus on crafting better, more thoughtful questions that can lead to deeper insights and resolutions. The questions are what really matter. So in summary, the passage advocates focusing more on the questions we ask rather than just the answers, as questions have the power to shape perspectives and outcomes in meaningful ways if approached intentionally. The passage discusses how questions shape answers and discussions in important ways. 
The question asked sets the framework and parameters for possible responses. Examples are given of how subtle differences in wording questions can entirely change the nature and tone of the conversation. Asking, do you want to go to sleep on the bed or couch, versus do you want to go to bed, leads to different responses from a child. Questions can shape perspectives and realities. The author's friend's mother reframed her question about her MS diagnosis from why me to why not me, which changed her outlook from one of depression to empowerment. Carefully crafting questions is important for nurturing deep, meaningful conversations and guiding discussions to a constructive end. Reframing issues as opportunities for growth can help people see problems differently. The questions we ask ourselves also shape our realities and ability to make decisions. Reframing big, open-ended questions into more specific, focused ones makes difficult problems and life choices more manageable. In summary, the passage discusses how purposefully constructing questions can empower perspectives, conversations, relationships, and decision-making in a positive way. Here are the key points about what makes a good question. It should have a connective point of view by focusing on the relationship between the people involved, not just one person's individual perspective. This keeps both people engaged and exploring their unique connection. It should be non-binary and open-ended to avoid simple yes-no answers and elicit deeper, more nuanced responses. Open-ended questions invite vulnerability and exploring shades of gray. It aims to empower and produce a constructive result rather than conflict. Questions that address problems or weaknesses in a caring, solutions-oriented way strengthen the relationship. It can be unexpected by connecting two unrelated ideas in a thought-provoking way. This avoids predictable questions and responses. It's phrased as an offering to the other person, not a demand, accusation, or directive. This honors their perspective and freedom to explore at their own pace. The passage emphasizes crafting questions that acknowledge the deep bond and shared understanding between people in a relationship. This facilitates open, empathetic conversations that provide insights, strengthen trust, and bring people closer together. The focus is on growth, understanding, and solving problems as a team rather than placing blame. Here are the key points about creating a safe space for conversations. Quality conversations can only happen when both partners feel emotionally safe. Safety is essential. Safety means cultivating mutual understanding of shared intention, motivation, care, and clear guidelines for the conversation. Comfort, on the other hand, should not be the goal. Some discomfort is necessary for growth. Feeling safe enough to be vulnerable is more important than feeling comfortable. Understanding why you're having the conversation, the intention behind it, and setting ground rules creates an emotionally safe space where ideas can be shared vulnerably and received openly. Safe spaces allow us to feel emotions like sadness, fear, heartbreak openly, like watching a play. We know the intent, care, and boundaries of the experience. The main idea is that feeling emotionally safe through understanding intent, care for each other, and clear guidelines is more conducive to open communication than simply seeking comfort. Some vulnerability and discomfort may lead to growth if the foundation of safety is there. Here are the key differences between watching a staged performance versus observing a street fight. Context framing. A staged performance takes place within the predefined context and boundaries of the stage. It's understood to be acting fiction. A street fight lacks this predefined context, so it feels more intimate, surreal. Permission. With a staged performance, there is implicit permission to observe as the audience. With a street fight, one feels like an invading voyeur without permission to observe such a private confrontation. Intention. When watching a stage performance, the intention is entertainment, artistic expression. With a street fight, observing could be seen more as sensationalism invading privacy rather than intent to experience art. Emotions. A stage performance is designed to evoke feelings in a safe, removed way. A street fight directly inserts one into real, unwelcome conflict emotions without choosing to be there. Privacy. The stage is a public performance space. A street is not a performance. It's a private space where people do not intend to be observed in a fight without consenting to it. So in summary, the key difference is the context permission and intentions created by the framing of a staged performance 
versus the lack of framing and consent involved in observing a private confrontation on the street. Deep listening means fully focusing your attention on what your partner is saying and how their words make you feel physically and emotionally. It involves letting down your mental defenses and filtering to truly take in the other person. Feelings reside in the body, not just the mind. Deep listening means tuning into subtle bodily sensations, tension, relaxation, movements of breath, etc., to understand one's intuitive responses beyond surface emotions or urges. It requires slowing down mental processes to make space for intuitive feelings to emerge. There may be silence as one processes physically before responding. Responses that come from deep listening tend to feel effortless and insightful, guided by intuition rather than pre-planned thoughts. The author advocates deep listening as a tool for more meaningful conversations and relationships. It avoids generic, programmed responses in favor of individual truths revealed through embodied feelings. Deep listening was effective for the author's documentary interviews, leading to better questions intuitively sparked by physical attunement with interviewees. The passage discusses deep listening and emotional articulation. It emphasizes dropping into one's feelings to truly connect with your partner. Deep listening involves focusing on what your partner says while also tapping into your own emotions. Don't prepare a response until they finish speaking. Share from an authentic place of connection rather than trying to make sense. It argues that human relationships would benefit from embracing feelings over just intellect, changing Descartes' famous quote to, I feel, therefore I am. Having connective conversations can help develop the skill of emotional articulation, expressing emotions in a way that is honest, articulate, and meaningful to your partner. This does not come naturally to most and requires practice. Modeling from others can also help like observing videos of conversations from the AND project where participants excel at emotional articulation. Deep listening to yourself and your partner, as well as being open to metaphors and stories, can help express feelings more effectively. These kinds of in-depth conversations provide opportunities to strengthen emotional articulation. The passage discusses the importance of the first question in a deep, intimate conversation between partners, asking each other to share their three favorite memories together and why they cherish them. Recalling positive shared experiences helps ground the conversation in the foundation of love and trust that the relationship was built on. This fortifies the connection for exploring new territory. Looking back at where the relationship started aids understanding where it is now and where it's going. Though the present constantly changes, the early memories provide a stable point of reference. Unique shared memories highlight what's only been possible because of the partner's synergy. It underscores the specific possibilities and love solidified by their union in facing life's challenges. Reliving cherished memories builds trust between partners and acknowledges their distinctive connection. The very act of recalling memories together can become one in the future. Partners may select different memories over time or uncover ones previously forgotten showing how the relationship keeps developing new possibilities through their continued experiences. Kat and Keith have been together for some time. Keith asks Kat how her initial impression of him has changed over time. Kat notes that physically, Keith has changed a lot through his transition from female to male. This included changes like short hair, pierced ears, and a more masculine presentation. Keith seems proud of the acknowledgement of his journey. Kat elaborates on the physical changes she has observed from their early relationship to the present. Their conversation allows them to reflect on how Keith has evolved over time in his identity and expression. Kat recognizes and affirms the changes she has witnessed in her partner throughout their relationship. The key aspects are Kat's first impression focused on Keith's female identity and presentation. Over the course of their relationship and Keith's transition, Kat has witnessed significant physical changes reflecting his male identity. Recognizing these changes provides an opportunity for Kat to affirm Keith's journey and for them to acknowledge how he has evolved since they first met. Here are some thoughtful responses your partner could share. I feel closest to you when we're curled up together on the couch at the end of a long day. Just being near you, sharing quiet moments of relaxation, 
always makes me feel comforted and understood. The intimacy of those simple routines we've built together means a lot. Doing little things side by side, like cooking a meal together or doing chores, always makes me feel really connected to you. I love how we work as a team without even having to think about it. It's in those everyday interactions where I see our partnership and friendship at its strongest. Going for walks or hikes together is when I often feel most content being with you. Being outdoors in nature, conversing easily, helps me unwind and appreciate the little things. I cherish our chats and the quality time we share without distractions. Late at night, just before falling asleep, I often feel overcome with affection being next to you in bed. Winding down from the day, chatting or cuddling skin to skin, allows me to feel deeply bonded and intimate with you in a calm, reassuring way. Silly, insignificant moments like making each other laugh, enjoying our favorite music together, or debating inside jokes can sometimes make me grateful for our companionship the most. The simplicity of those shared pleasures knits us closely together. The key is focusing on routine yet meaningful interactions that foster an unspoken closeness and intimacy through shared experience, partnership, fun, or relaxation, the glue that steadily builds and maintains their bond over time. This question aims to explore moments of closeness that recur in the daily life shared by the couple, rather than just past moments. It looks at how daily interactions keep the couple bonded. The moments each couple shares are unique to them. Paying attention to specific details in the chosen moment can reveal the threads of intimacy unique to their connection. Maddie shared a recurring intimate moment with Martin of waking up at night after a conflict and choosing to cuddle with him, finding reconciliation in that act. Describing it in detail helped them acknowledge and appreciate that moment. Noticing everyday moments of intimacy through mindfulness can strengthen awareness of the connection and fortify the relationship, similar to how meditation trains us to notice peacefulness. When answering, take a deep breath and let emotions guide the choice of moment rather than overthinking it. Small, unexpected moments may indicate closeness as much as bigger actions. Lack of moments could signify a relationship issue needing attention. The key is to thoughtfully reflect on recurring everyday interactions that convey intimacy and bring deeper awareness and appreciation to the connection through sharing those unique moments. Both details and emotions are important to the process. The question asks, what each person is hesitant to ask their partner and why. Even in strong relationships, there will be topics of hesitancy. Addressing small points of hesitancy prevents them from growing into larger issues. Exploring discomfort strengthens the relationship by building trust and flexibility. However, fear of discomfort should not be confused with fear of abuse. Only address topics that can be discussed safely. Sharing one's whole self, including hesitant pieces, allows the partner to experience the fully alive and emotional person. Holding back restricts intimacy. Discomfort is often exaggerated in our minds. Taking small steps to address issues usually makes the anxiety more manageable than initially feared. For Ivo and Kevin, an open discussion helped alleviate Ivo's anxiety by reaffirming their commitment, acting as a pressure release valve. Facing concerns strengthens relationships. The key messages are that hesitancies, if addressed respectfully, can deepen intimacy and trust over time, even if uncomfortable initially. Only proceed with discussions that feel safe. Here is a summary of the key points. Kevin and Evo have been in a relationship for over 20 years. They have built a deep connection while also dealing with challenges related to Ivo's anxiety and OCD. Kevin has tended to hide problems from Evo in order to avoid triggering his anxiety. This has caused Kevin stress and resentment at times, but he does it out of care for Ivo. When Evo directly asks Kevin if this causes resentment, it allows an uncomfortable issue to be addressed openly. Kevin admits it has been difficult, but says Evo's efforts to improve make him hopeful. The honest conversation gives Evo insight into Kevin's experience and allows Kevin to feel heard. It deepens their understanding while releasing built-up tension. Facing difficulties openly with care, understanding, and commitment can strengthen relationships even further. Hiding problems to avoid discomfort often backfires in the long run. The prompt encourages confronting challenges in relationships rather than avoiding them, 
as this is how we grow. Comfort zones must be expanded to better understand ourselves, our skills, and our relationships. Addressing challenges constructively rather than avoiding conflicts strengthens relationships in a sustainable way. The goal is not to be free from all challenges, but to openly and constructively confront those that arise, learning from each one. This allows the relationship to flex and become stronger. Partners are asked to identify their current biggest challenge and what they feel it is teaching them about themselves, each other, and the relationship. Learning from challenges is the biggest gift of being in a relationship. Focusing on challenges reframed as opportunities to learn and strengthen the bond, rather than merely problems to solve, puts partners in a mindset of growth. The prompt aims to uncover relationship growing pains and find the lessons within them. Effective communication and willingness to step outside comfort zones, even during awkward moments, can help relationships blossom further. The passage discusses challenges that arise in relationships and how facing them provides opportunities for learning and growth. The author shares her own experience of repeatedly facing the same challenges in relationships due to unresolved issues like low self-esteem and a fear of intimacy. She would get stuck in cycles instead of truly learning the lessons. It took self-reflection and conversations for her to realize the deeper lesson, to stop chasing and running away from intimacy. Once she faced her fears, she was able to have more fulfilling relationships. Facing challenges together in a relationship is natural and healthy, as long as both parties see the challenges as ones they are okay dealing with for the sake of growth. Not all challenges can or should be avoided. When disagreements arise, it's best to discuss them with gratitude, understanding, and a focus on the relationship dynamic rather than blaming each other. Recognizing each other's sacrifices can also help address lingering issues. The key messages are that relationships inherently involve challenges, but facing them together provides an opportunity for learning if both partners are willing to reflect on the deeper lessons being taught and make needed changes to unhelpful patterns. Communication, understanding, and gratitude are important for overcoming challenges in a healthy way. This question asks couples to discuss sacrifices they have made for the relationship, even difficult or painful ones, and why certain sacrifices may not have been acknowledged or brought to light before. Sharing sacrifices, even uncomfortable ones, can help each partner gain a more complete perspective on how they impact each other. It diffuses resentment when a sacrifice is finally appreciated. Looking at why a sacrifice wasn't acknowledged before can build empathy by understanding another's perspective or trauma. It prevents emotionally punishing the other person. For one couple discussed, the wife acknowledging sacrifices the other made helped her see the strength of her love and commitment to the relationship in a new light. Simply receiving acknowledgement of a sacrifice from a partner can be transformative and cause one to see the relationship differently by having their actions reflected back to them. Overall, it's about gaining greater understanding of each other through open communication. Kevin and Evo are having a conversation where tensions are observable in Kevin's body language and forced smile. Evo acknowledges that Kevin carries a bigger burden in the relationship, which provides much needed recognition and relief for Kevin. His whole demeanor relaxes upon receiving this validation. Receiving acknowledgement from your partner for sacrifices you've made can transform that effort from a point of pain to a point of pride. It empowers you and fosters self-love. Unacknowledged sacrifices, on the other hand, can breed resentment over time. Recognition is important. Questions four to six in their conversation were pulling at strings of how the couple handles conflict, hesitation, challenges, unresolved issues. Question six addressed an unacknowledged sacrifice. Linnea and Eliza have an emotional conversation. Linnea wishes to heal the pain Eliza feels over losing her mother, but knows only Eliza can do that work. Linnea provides perspectives to aid Eliza's healing journey, understanding what happened, the costs of holding on to pain. Overall, it's a vulnerable exchange exploring how partners experience each other's pain. Here are a few reflections on this question. Focus on learning and growth, not blame. Revisiting difficult shared experiences is best done with a spirit of understanding, not accusing or defending past actions. 
Look for lessons learned rather than faults. Compassion is key. Expressing care and empathy for how your partner felt can help reopen difficult discussions in a healing way. Listen without judgment. Things may look different now. Time and perspective can change how an event is viewed. Be open to new insights that weren't possible in the heat of the moment. Some closure may help. Candidly discussing feelings around an experience rather than avoiding it can provide a sense of resolution. But don't force it if one or both parties aren't ready. Growth comes from challenge. Not all difficult experiences should be wished away, as they often lead to strengthening the relationship through facing adversity together. Focus on how you've supported each other through hard times. Validate each other's feelings without reliving drama. Acknowledge how the other felt without getting bogged down in rehashing all the details and emotions. Keep perspectives balanced. Look to the future. Discussing past hurts is best done to provide understanding, not conflict. Remind each other of your commitment going forward rather than dwelling in past regrets. You've come through the experience as a team. The goal here isn't accusation, but reflection. Seeing how shared challenges shaped you both individually and as a couple, for better or worse. With compassion and care for each other, difficult topics don't need to divide, but can instead bring more intimacy and trust. This section discusses how intimate conversations between partners can lead to profound realizations and perspective shifts. It gives the example of Marcella and Rock discussing their shared experience of Rock being in prison. Initially, Rock views this as the greatest collective wound in their relationship and something he wishes hadn't happened. However, Marcella offers a new framing, saying their challenges strengthened their relationship and led to the family they have now. This visibly impacts Rock, who acknowledges the profoundness of Marcella's perspective. The concept of a rack focus moment is introduced, where insight brings the past clearly into context. The author relates their own rack focus experience while filming conversations for the and, gaining a new understanding of how their past struggles ultimately led them to their fulfilling work. Intimate conversations between partners can provide rack focus moments that radically change one's view of shared difficulties and the relationship as a whole. The passage discusses how our intimate relationships can be our greatest teachers and we learn the deepest lessons from those closest to us. It suggests we are here on earth to learn from each other and profound lessons can come from interactions with friends, family, coworkers, even strangers. The question asks what we are learning from our partner specifically. This shifts the focus to appreciating the gifts our partner has given us by being in our lives. It provides an example of a conversation between Andrew and Gerald, a married couple. Through observing Gerald's patience over the years, Andrew learned patience himself, as well as that genuine kindness and calm can truly exist in people. Gerald became a tailor-made mirror that taught Andrew deeper lessons about trusting others' behavior and that emotional health is possible not just a facade. This impacted how Andrew views all people. So in summary, the passage discusses how intimate relationships can be our greatest teachers, invites expressing gratitude for what we learn from our partner, and provides an example of profound life lessons one person learned from observing their spouse. Andrew shares that through his relationship with Gerald, his perspective on what was possible in life expanded greatly. Having come from a conservative religious upbringing, Andrew never thought he could get married or have an authentic, openly gay relationship. Gerald helped prove to Andrew that those things were indeed possible. Not only that, but members of Andrew's family came to accept and support their relationship. Andrew attributes this major shift to Gerald as an individual. He feels their specific synergy and unique connection allowed Gerald to positively influence both Andrew and his family in a way no one else could. This suggests Gerald has a caring, diplomatic personality that helped others see past preconceived notions to appreciate him and their relationship. It also indicates the strong bond between Andrew and Gerald enabled personal growth. Areas Andrew may look to further develop his own emotional health could include building self-acceptance, becoming more authentic, strengthening interpersonal skills like communication, and learning to feel comfortable being emotionally open slash vulnerable like Gerald seems to be.
continuing to surround himself with supportive individuals like Gerald could also aid further growth. The passage discusses the importance of partners sharing a collective dream or mutual goal for the future of their relationship. It describes one man's experience where raising his children was the main shared project with his wife. But as the kids were getting older, he was concerned about what would continue pulling them together without that shared goal. It emphasizes that having something to work towards together, even if abstract, helps give a relationship continued meaning and prevents partners from growing apart over time due to lack of shared purpose. Sharing dreams strengthens the bond between partners and gives them excitement and motivation to keep investing in each other and the relationship. Individual dreams are also important, but a mutual dream unites the couple. It advises couples to discuss what future goals, experiences, or projects they could envision pursuing together that would maintain their connection and fulfillment as a team beyond current life stages like raising children. A shared dream reinforces commitment to the relationship. Here's a summary of the key points. The question prompts envisioning one's last conversation with their partner and what they would never want them to forget. It acknowledges the inevitability of future separation, whether through the end of the relationship or death. Answering the question provides an opportunity to share profound, honest, and vulnerable words that one may not otherwise express. It leverages the trust and comfort built through the conversation to share things usually left unsaid. Our culture conditions us to feel uncomfortable openly expressing pure, undiluted love. But sharing from the heart when moved to can subvert those judgments. The supportive context of the conversation makes it a good time to try this. The purpose is not to rush future dreams, but embrace life's flow. Change is natural as priorities evolve over time, like focusing more on children. Current dreams are what's discussed. The reflection focuses on recognizing one's own gifts, even if unseen personally, and being a mirror to help partners see their full beauty and potential. We have agency in what we reflect to enrich others' lives. So in summary, the question prompts envisioning a last conversation and voicing profound sentiments usually left unsaid to offer something precious by choosing to speak one's truth in the present moment within the trusting context built through the conversation. When you love someone, simply inspecting your feelings of love can reveal layers of intimacy and closeness. Ultimately, you may find an inarticulable feeling of connectedness. Asking why you love your partner allows you to articulate specific reasons for your connection and appreciate each other's divinity. It also creates space for silent awareness of the transcendent force of love. Expressing why you love someone is important for both people to understand the depth and nuances of their relationship. It helps fulfill a human need to explain intimate feelings. Peeling back layers takes practice, but rewarding conversations can blossom from thoughtfully answering this question in a safe, vulnerable space where the entire relationship has been explored. Examples are provided. While love may feel too complex to explain, choosing to love a partner means being able to articulate reasons without relying on platitudes. Silence can also communicate feelings too profound for words. Processing this question involves truly dropping into your emotions to express love from the heart rather than reciting cliches. The ensuing moment of shared understanding nourishes the relationship. Here is a summary of the key points. Having an open and honest conversation with a partner can be challenging and issues may arise. Some common problems are expectations, agendas, rushing through questions, and conversations becoming too painful. It's important to go into the conversation without expectations or an agenda and focus on connection rather than results. Rushing should be avoided to allow for deep discussion. The 12 questions are intentionally sequenced to build intimacy and should be completed in order in one sitting. Deeper discussions that emerge from answers should be explored fully. If pain or conflict arises, slow down even more. Sitting with emotional pain can lead to healing rather than avoiding it. A technique called creative listening can help shift the energy if conflict occurs. The listener repeats back what they heard to ensure understanding before responding. The key emphasis is on openness, deep listening, avoiding agendas, moving slowly, sitting with difficult emotions, 
and using techniques like creative listening to work through any issues that arise constructively. The goal is an intimate connection between partners. Here are a few key points summarized. Creative listening involves reflecting back what the speaker said to ensure understanding before responding. This makes the speaker feel heard and acknowledges their perspective. Hard rules can be implemented if an argument is escalating. No one speaks until given the talking stick, creating space for each to be fully heard. It's important to get willing participation from both partners. If one seems hesitant, gently encourage them and reassure the goal is experience, not outcomes. Allow different communication styles. At the end, close the conversation constructively, even if difficult topics arose. Rarely, such conversations may uncover irreconcilable differences leading to breakup. While difficult, it's better than long-term unhappiness through willful ignorance of issues. The goal is open, honest understanding between partners. So in summary, these techniques aim to foster respectful, empathetic communication where both feelings are validated to enhance intimacy and relationship health over the long run, even if difficult truths emerge. Here are the key points. The passage discusses the importance of having open and honest conversations with your partner to strengthen your relationship and connection. Regular communication about your lives, experiences, and relationship is key. The author met a couple, Carl and Joetta, who have been married for many years. Their secret to a thriving relationship is spending time each evening talking in their backyard hot tub about their lives and relationship. This regular maintenance through meaningful conversation has cultivated deep love and intimacy. The 12 questions and conversations outlined in the book should not be a one-time thing. Building intimacy is a practice that requires coming back to discussions like these regularly. Doing so will help relationships grow deeper over time. Beyond these specific questions, the author encourages crafting your own thoughtful questions to have ongoing conversations that strengthen communication and understanding with your partner. This can also benefit relationships with others. Setting aside dedicated regular time, even just once a week for relationship-focused conversations is an important habit like Carl and Joetta have demonstrated. The content is less important than intentionally making these discussions a priority. So in summary, the passage advocates for ongoing open communication with partners through asking meaningful questions as a way to nurture intimacy and connection in relationships over the long term. Regular maintenance conversations are key. The passage discusses improving the questions we ask ourselves when making decisions by adding three key elements. One, time frame. Rather than indefinite decisions, frame questions around a specific time period, like for the next year, to make the decision more manageable. Two, feelings. Consider how different options would make you feel, like inspire us and give more to one another. This helps narrow options. Three, impact on others. Acknowledge how a decision affects people around you, like support creating a nurturing environment for our children. Framing questions this way leads to easier, less stressful decisions and focuses on what truly matters. Examples show reworking questions around career, health, mental well-being in a constructive way. The goal is empowering ourselves by crafting questions that elicit better answers and shift our mindset to see interconnection. Overall, this approach changes how we construct meaning and perceive the world.